The speaker is uh, Paper and Book Conservator Rita Udina from Barcelona, Spain, who is working at her own private cons uh, conservation lab, uh, where she works for archives, museums, libraries, and private collectors since 1999. Uh, she occasionally collaborates with other private conservative studios in other countries, such as India, France, USA, Italy, and, and the others. The title of her lecture is Conservation of Reused Bindings. Rita, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Thanks for inviting me to, to this conference. Honoring the title of the lecture, Conservation of Reused Bindings, I'm recycling a former lecture of two months ago. But uh, I will share diverse uh, study cases, which are more complex than the previous time. So, uh, fragmentology and this chapter membra are two terms related to the recycling of material in bookbinding. Um, I want to group them in two. So, uh, from one side, all the most common case of waste material mainly documents that are reused as part of the binding. So for instance, we have here a hinge of a book, which is in fact a fragment of a manuscript about laws, and it holds the sewing of a printed book about medicine. So the contents are usually not connected to each other. And in the second group, we will have all those bindings which uh, have been fully recycled. So the binding of a book is recycled, recycled to become the binding of another book. Um, mainly uh, referring to this jecta membra, the scattered fragments, so the first group, I have uh, two diverse uh, approaches on the conservation treatment of this type of, of bindings. That's the first one. Uh, it's an incunabula from Girona. And there are um, reuse of materials both in the binding, as you can see here, and paper repairs. Taking a closer look at the recycled uh, manuscript used as a limp vellum binding, we can tell that the calligraphy looks much older than the printed book. However, waste material is necessarily older than the current use, so it's not a relevant data regarding the dating of the binding. It might be of importance uh, to locate it, but never to date it when it's uh, older. But we were uh, luckier for the end papers, which are in fact a much more recent uh, printed paper than the book itself. So if the fragment is uh, more recent than the, than, the, than the text, we know how old can the binding be, a few centuries away from the book, for instance. If uh, conservation requires this assembling, we can take advantage of, of this fact and digitize the image of the fragments that were formerly hidden in the binding. However, we need to be aware that a digital image is never the same as an original and many other analyses will be restricted once the fragments are taken back to their use. So that's the book before conservation and after conservation. So I didn't want to hide these evidences of recycling and you can still uh, see them. So we see the second use and we have limited access to the first use, the, the fragments, the, the documents uh, with, the, with the digitized image. As a summary for this conservation treatment, a lot of work to hardly see any differences. The second example is uh, another limb vellum binding uh, from Lleida. It's a manuscript and 
uh, the binding is again a recycled um, manuscript. You might not see, but it's a reverse parchment, and there there is already text in 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 this side. But it's so damaged that uh, it's scarcely visible. The inner side was written as well, but uh, the the turning prevents to have full access to, to the text as well as the sewing. The poor condition of this binding or what's left of it uh, made it better or uh, to reproduce the binding because it's not really possible to restore these pieces and have at the same degree uh, readability of the hidden parts and uh, have a proper binding that holds the text block. So, um, ah, there was a label in the spine that maybe it's not visible because it's so dirty. So after removing the binding, uh, we can have access. This is the, the outer side after cleaning and making a UV photograph. And now we can see the, the hidden text under the label. So the binding was reproduced and the label in the, in the reproduction and uh, I needed to guess the tackets that were missing on, on, the, on the original binding. And all the uh, extracted fragments were kept aside and we can check on them whenever we want. So we see a lot. We see much better the, the text on the bind, on the on the fragment, uh, the components of the sewing. We we have a, a new binding, so we should be very satisfied. But honestly, I'm not that satisfied <laughs> because this is a reproduction. It's it, it shall never be the same as as an original but uh, we cannot have uh, functionality and uh, the same at the same time. So the, the treatment is easier, is less time consuming, but we see everything separately. Let's compare these two diverse approaches. This is before conservation and this is after. In the first case, we barely see any difference and we have restricted access to the hidden fragments through a digital image. And in the second case, we have full access to everything. We can do as many analyses as we want now and in the future, but we, uh, we see a very different thing, thing from what we had and um, we don't see the recycling that easier. So our brain needs to do a bigger effort to rebind the book and see the fact that it's a, a, a fragmentology case. That's the thing. So to conclude for the case of uh, scattered fragments of this checta membrane, um, it should be as easy as valuing the importance of the fragment and compare it to the importance of the object as a whole. But of course, it's not as easy as that because the conservation condition of each of the parts uh, modifies this balance and uh, the available resources also modify our decision making. <laughs> okay, so uh, enough scattering, let's, let's all go together to the um, conservation of recycled bindings. So the binding that is fully recycled for another book. I have this example, which is a manuscript uh, from Tarraga. And I, I want you to take a few seconds to take a look and make your own opinion <clears throat> both about the binding and uh, about the conservation treatment. So I'm starting from the end, showing you the, <laughs> the result. So we see 
that the forage is uh, somehow coming off uh, the binding and we also see a very clumsy sewing in the spine. Taking a closer look, we see that there are evidences of tackets in, in the front cover, only the holes in the bottom, but the top one is in good condition both inside and outside of the turning. But we see no evidence of the tackets in the, in the back cover, not even the holes. And uh, in fact, the back cover seems that it has been cut because there is not even the turning of the binding. This is the, the back cover and you know that accidental tears have irregular shapes. But even if the fold of the turning was here or here, this is a much too straight uh, shape to be accidental. So it clearly seems like it had been cut. Anyway, looking for symmetries to <clears throat> find the tackets, it was clear that the back cover is in fact a bit wider than the front one. So what type of binding has this structure? No tackets, no turning in the in the back and narrower in the front. A flap, uh, a flap provides this structure. Good. So if there is a flap, we don't need any turn, any tacket in the back cover because it's laced in the, in the flap. But then there should be a fastening to, to close this flap and the fastening should be held in the front cover somehow. So where are the evidences of this fastening? And here they are. We didn't find the fastening, but the holes that held it on the front cover. Good. And if we open the binding, they are even more evident. And this explains why the front cover is narrower, the existence of a flap. So, I assume that there had been a flap, but none of these evidences um, show or prove that this is the case of a recycled binding. We shall look for them in the spine. At least the binding seems not only narrower, but also shorter, and this good point at uh, recycling, though not definitive. We also see that the spine is much narrower than the actual text block. But this is not uh, um, definitive either, because you all know that other um, gatherings are commonly added after binding. But what is really weird is that the sewing starts in the middle of the spine. And this, this uh, shifting of the text block has two possible explanations. Either there are missing gatherings in the beginning, which is possible, or they recycled the binding and started a bit beyond to match the width of the second use of the binding. But still, it's a possibility. It's not a conclusive evidence. Where is that? Here it is. Here we have two pairs of aligned uh, holes of a former sewing matching exactly the, the width of the, of the spine and corresponding to the two tackets of a regular uh, sewing. So, uh, bookbinder, we got you. Here's to you. <laughs> okay, so we know that the binding had a flap, and we know that it's a recycled binding. But 
um, we don't know whether the recycling um, had the flap or not. Um, in my opinion, it's most likely that the flap was foregone with the recycling. So they might have cut the flap to adjust the binding uh, to a, a wider text block. But we, we really cannot uh, know with these evidences. So I have spent 12 slides only to examine the binding. <laughs> and I have not even started the conservation treatment. My uh, first uh, dilemma was, do I have to reconstruct the binding or either the flap or not? I would um, prevail the second use of the binding, no? Because that's the, the ultimate. However, in this case, the second use uh, was much, uh, much too weak. It was a very weak structure. The, the pages in the front and in the forage are very much unprotected. And the missing packets on the back cover make it uh, very weak, both for the for the binding and, and for the folios. So I added a flap which uh, was in the first use and solves all these issues because now even if the front cover is narrower, the folios are protected and in the back cover the binding is perfectly secure. So this is the loose um, turning and this is after conservation. The turning is attached uh, through a tacket in the flap and it's not damaging the, the folios anymore. So apart from adding a flap, I also made other structural modifications. So in green you see the location of the second sewing in this binding, which is shifted away from the front cover. But I moved it towards the front cover and because I wanted to avoid this, this gap because the, the first or fold of the first use was very much uh, strong. So I uh, brought the book towards the front cover. So this is the gap before conservation and no such gap after conservation. And I guess many of you see another modification which is the addition of an inner parchment reinforcement. And that's because after the consolidation of the binding there were still many, many holes in the spine and tears that uh, did not um, guarantee that the sewing would uh, resist not breaking the spine again. So I just added uh, a piece of parchment to prevent further damage. On the overall, the modifications after conservation were the reconstruction of the flap, the shifting of the sewing position and also the uh, addition of a, a parchment reinforcement. So now again you see the images I showed you in the beginning but now you know you know everything now. <laughs> you can better judge and I'm fully aware of how controversial the addition of a flap that I myself think that it might not have been for the second use uh, is. But it really solves all the preservation issues that arise from such a weak uh, structure. And in truth, when we are dealing with two diverse timeline bindings, it's uh, really difficult to mm, deal with them. And there are also many other structural changes that are meant not to be visible at all. No? So you, you don't really see that much the shifting of the sewing or, or the parchment reinforcement. 
So it's really, really difficult to virtually have two bindings at the same time. And uh, I mean, we cannot really have it physically. So to conclude for the, for the case of um, recycling of, of bindings, it's more complex because we want to keep uh, all the evidences, the, the first binding and the second, all, all the uses of the binding. But the conservation is already more complex because if the binding is reused, it is probably because the first use has damaged the binding. So, it requires a lot of creativity because the crafting process is in itself very creative. So a binding that is probably a bit broken uh, is adjusted. I mean, a binding with particular features and a bit damaged is adjusted for another book with other features and, and they, they don't do a regular crafting process. So the conservation treatment cannot uh, consist just in reproducing this because it's usually weak. So as a summary for, um, for everything, both uh, this checta membra and also um, recycling of full uh, bindings. Data to be preserved is beyond textual. So it's not that we want to keep only the texts. No, we want to keep and preserve the, the recycling itself because it's also telling us an information about the crafting process of, of the object. And we need to try to avoid scattering all the fragments the, the more we can. I mean, it's not possible, but we need to seek to <clears throat> keep it as... Uh, as much as possible as it was, and in case we are not reusing them, preserve all the evidences. It needs to be reported even deeply than ever, because um, particularly the, um, the previous stage, because if we are going to do any modification during the conservation treatment, we might erase these uh, evidences that maybe were unnoticed to us. So even if not understanding uh, what we have in hands, we need to do a very thorough report of every detail that we see in the, con in the, in the, in the binding. And uh, to conclude, uh, we want to uh, see the effects of the conservation. But we don't want uh, to be blinded by seeing many things at the same time for, for the sake of uh, visibility to unnoticed features. So the important is that uh, we give visibility to, to the book and make the conservation the least visible possible. Oh, that's it. So I want to acknowledge the owners of such beautiful books and also all the conservators and the photographer who worked on them. And I'm happy to reply to any questions you might have. Thank you. A question for Rita Utida. Uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation. What material was used for the addition of TWAP in the third book and how was it adhered to the original backing? Rita, can you answer? Um, yes. Can you see me? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so I um, lined the whole binding with Japanese tissue from the inner side. And the flap uh, is made of Japanese tissue as well. So the Japanese tissue for the, um, for the flap was thicker. It was previously uh, dyed. And then after lining, I adjusted the color 
and yeah, that was it. I, uh, the addition was with a starch paste. Mm. That's it. <laughs>